Welcome back everybody. This is my 34th update video where I go back to 10 past product reviews in order and let you know how the original video went and also update you if anything has changed since my original review was posted because I do tend to use all of these products even after my review is online. The products I'm revisiting today were reviewed in February and March of 2021. There's a total of 25 products among these 10 videos. So without further delay, let's get right to update number 34. My 331st product review was a countertop dishwasher. This is one that a lot of people were interested in. It's something that's not really a replacement for a full-size dishwasher, but in tight spaces, works quite well. Here's some scenes how my original countertop dishwasher review went. Load the dishwasher. Well, it's partially loaded. Detergent is added. Very nice, very nice. We have a full display here. Oh, there goes the water. Oh, and there it goes. Oh, yeah. 69 minutes. Oh, it looks very dry, very clean, very clean. I do like the fact that you can look in there with the window. A lot of these countertop dishwashers don't have that. That's one of the reasons I like this one because it, it's just kind of fun to look at it. All right, this one had a bunch of stuff caked on it. Let's see. Oh, that's looks, looks great. I think all the silverware looks pretty good too. Breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and a little nightcap all together. I'm going to let this sit 24 hours, come back tomorrow, and load them up. All right, almost 24 hours later. Let's take a look. Ooh, wow, that is caked on there. This is going to be ugly. I have a bad feeling about this one too. All right, so that one's, that one's ready to go. I'm going to try to put these both facing down just like I did in the other one. Let's first see the full-size dishwasher. Okay. Oh, steam. All right, this plate looks beautiful. Oh, wow. My dishwasher's good. All right, in the same order, the plate. Well, look at this for the big reveal. And, whoa. I think it did better than I expected. I'd say it passed with flying colors. I think overall, this is an impressive machine. I had kind of low expectations and it certainly exceeded that. So because of the size of it, because I have a full-size dishwasher, I decided to just give it away to someone who could use it. I touched base with it a few months back and the last I heard, it was still working pretty well. So it's not for everybody, but there are those out there who find something like this quite useful. Number 332 was my sixth mail time video. That's always an interesting collection because you never know what's going to show up in your mailbox. Let's first take a look back at how the original review went. Put your burger in there or other rounded items like donut or bagel. It is flexible. You could fit a pretty big burger in there. Mm, not much easier. It is still collecting any of the drippings though. It's keeping my shirt clean. Groove belt does not need to be adjusted. Once you adjust it once, it does not need to be adjusted. But you do have the magnetic clasp here, which is kind of satisfying. It's very easy to latch. That's, that's one nice thing about it. It seems actually more difficult than a regular belt to adjust it. So if you've been looking for an alternate belt, especially if you haven't had luck with the ratchet belts, the group belt might be a good choice for you. The problem with this is this kind of a mounting system will likely damage the, your, your paint, your drywall, your wallpaper. Hold it for 30 seconds. It just feels pretty solid. But it looks like after two days it held up, it's still pretty sturdy. But here's what happened when I did my simulation of a failed wonder shelf. Oh man, look at that. I can see why people want to use command strips because uh, that's not good. This is the sleep band. It's a sleep mask with embedded Bluetooth speakers. I can feel there are a couple of speakers in there. This goes around your head when you sleep. Well, I can't even tell what button is which. I guess that's the play button. Uh, I gotta turn the volume up, but I, I can barely feel the buttons. The speakers sound good. Let me see. Oh yeah, this is the best part. I actually hear music. My head is flagging against the pillow and it's not uncomfortable. It kind of digs right in your nose. I was also gonna point out that I do like that you can control the, you can skip to the next track or the previous track, adjust the volume, pause and play all from your forehead. So when that video concluded, I was under the impression that the sleep band was the one that I was going to use the most. And I was wrong about that. That's not the one I use the most. In fact, I don't really use that one at all. The one I use the most is actually the groove belt, which I actually been using more and more lately. So right now my number one belt is still a track line, but it's getting kind of old. And I've been looking for other belts that I reviewed as kind of a good backup and the groove belt 
seems to fit the need for that. I never really got the one-handed technique down, but doesn't really matter. I, just, I do like it. I still like the adjustability of the ratchet belts, but I've found that the groove belt is actually pretty good. This is number 333. This is the Cool Turtle. This is a mask insert that supposedly helps you breathe more easily when you're wearing a mask. These were advertised quite a bit in 2021. Let's look back at how my original review went. This goes underneath your mask and creates a cushion where you don't have the mask up against your face. It supposedly helps you breathe better, talk better. It doesn't sacrifice any safety issues. It looks like they said it can work with any mask, but if I guess if you have this type of mask, you can just kind of clip it on like that. Most people, they were just showing and lifting it up and sticking it in there, so to speak. Just lifting up, sticking it in there over your nose. Hmm. So test one with the cool turtle. Does this sound clearer than the other side that I'm about to play right now? Or is this side better without the cool turtle? I almost feel like it's better without the cool turtle. I'm not really sure. What do you think about that? All right, I guess it, I guess it feels okay. You know what's funny is that having that cushion of air around your mouth sounds like a good idea, but it actually feels almost hotter. I should just walk around like this and say this is my mask. It looks... It's like this, it looks like I have an athletic cup on my face. When it's just the mask, it feels like it kind of clears out faster. But when it's there, it's just kind of lingering. Well, it definitely fogs up the, my glasses even more. I should also point out there's a bunch of other similar products like this on Amazon. Some cheaper, some more expensive, some with slightly different designs, some that go over your ears. It might solve a problem for some people, but it's not going to be universally a better mask experience. It, situational use at, at best, I would say. All right, so I have to admit, I did not like the Cool Turtle at all. I tried to use them. I, I found them uncomfortable. I, but I will say that there's a lot of people that wrote into me and told me that I was wrong, that they like these. So it's, it's difference of opinion. I happen to not like them, so I didn't continue to use them. I gave a few of these, these away. The people I gave them to never really used them either. But there are people out there that like them. They just weren't for me. Number 334 was a collection of phone gadgets. Now phone gadgets is definitely a, a genre that's starting to increase more and more over the years, is getting more interesting gadgets. So here's how my original phone gadget collection went. So this is basically a cell phone or tablet stand for home, work, travel. You can do things like, like that for your phone. That seems like it's much sturdier than I anticipated it being. That's very solid. Well, I'm in the front seat, I can't even see it, but I haven't heard it fall down yet, so that's a good sign. Just kind of, kind of close the door on it. And then you can put your phone right there while you're using a recipe. I guess you put your phone in there like that to keep it out of the heat. I guess if you're sitting across from each other, you can each, each use one. These are magnetic charging cables. They just stick in there like that. And then we attach the, uh, the, the magnetic cable. That's, that's really all there is to it. It lights up a very attractive blue color. If you use the port on your phone for anything but charging, this may not be for you. Mobile phone screen magnifier by this brand, which I'm not even gonna try to pronounce, but you basically roll it in place, put your phone there, and then it magnifies it. It seems like the edges are a little bit out of focus compared to the center. The Amazon is bigger. I'm still seeing streaks on both of them though. You know, I have to admit that from this angle, the phone looks huge. I like the magnification. I don't like the streakiness on the, uh, on the glass. And this is the pocket tripod. To use it, all you do is rotate along the center axis. As far as rotating it then, you can put it this way to kind of leave it in place. It's not gonna go back anymore. Or you can turn it this way and tilt it back. So there is another way you can use this. What you do is you turn it to this configuration, pull them apart. Now you have two halves you can actually place further apart so you have a more stable base for your, uh, your phone. So out of that bunch, here's the one that I use the most. It's in my wallet. That's right, it's the Pocket Tripod. Now this has been in my wallet ever since that review was posted over a year ago. I probably sat on it hundreds of times and it's held up quite well. I can't say I use it on a day-to-day -day basis. It mainly sits in my wallet I use most of the time. But every time I've traveled since that video was posted, which is a few times, not only is it handy on the airplane when I travel, it's also handy in the hotel or an Airbnb. So I'm happy to report that the Pocket Tripod, after over a year of use, has held up quite well. Number 335 was the ID Police, which is an ASEAN TV product. Supposedly it allows you to mark up documents to keep them safe for disposal. Let's first take a look back at how the original review went. It says use firm pressure, slowly rolling the product over any information you want to cover. Oh, 
Oh, that is kind of fun. Their brand marked all over everything. Very quick, very quick actually, let me see. Compare the Sharpie, where well, you can kind of, I think you can figure that out. Not so much on the ID police. Let's see here. I guess I can read a word or two here and there, but I can't read all of it. What happens if I don't let it dry? Oh, geez. How about a cardboard? As the instructions said, the larger type's a little bit harder to hide. You can kind of make out some large letters, but it's still pretty good. I don't know if you can, I can see my name in there. What if I go over it a second time? Oh, I definitely can't see my name anymore. More junk mail. Boom! White letters on a dark surface. That's one pass through there, I could definitely see it. 123 Main Street, Anytown, Pennsylvania. Can you still read that? Not really. All right, so it is day two. I'm, I just looked over all the, uh, the things I tried yesterday. I'm not as impressed on the second day. It looks like the ink kind of faded in some cases. I can, I can read every word of the cardboard. Well, I, I, that's kind of hard to, well, I do see 123 Main Street. I can read that. City Hall, second floor, I can, I can read it. What I want to do now is actually see if I can wipe any of that ink off, especially on the slicker surfaces. Let's try that out. I've just got kind of a damp paper towel here. Let me see what happens to the ink. Not very secure now, is it? Didn't really expect it to be that easy. Let's try this one. Oh, look at that. Oh my goodness. Wiped right off. And, and this is after 24 hours. This isn't just fresh. This has been sitting there for a whole day. On the receipt, wiped right off. If you use it, it looks great and throw it in the trash can. It might not look that way the next day. All right, so for obvious reasons, I did not continue to use the ID police. I, in fact, I actually left it out for several months thinking maybe I'll grab it, maybe I'll find a use for it. I never really did. I had an extra one, I gave it away. I still see it advertised on television. I still see people asking about it. But to me, the ID police is not a well-conceived product. Number 336 was a collection of Rapid Brands microwave products. Let's first flash back to how the original review went. The rapid Hot Dog Cooker, the Rapid Corn and Potato Cooker, Rapid Veggie Steamer, and the Rapid Soup Mug. The Hot Dog Cooker just basically says, place your hot dog in the cooker, fill to the water line, and microwave. I'm hearing hissing. It's hissing. It like swelled up beyond the water line. It's going to take the one right in the center. It seems cooked. I'll take a bite. Hmm. That is an 18 and a half ounce can of soup in there. You can see it wouldn't hold two cans. It's kind of snapped on there. The tension mounts once again. Lid's kind of hot. Handle not hot. Oh, that's, if, be careful with your fingers. That's kind of hot touching right there. Wow, okay. Let's take a look. It seems pretty convenient to me. I, I don't really have a problem with this so far. Step one, put water up to the fill line. Insert the steam tray. Fresh broccoli, fresh. Fresh cauliflower, it doesn't hold a lot, does it? So it doesn't hold a great deal, but let's see. Cover with lid. And we're off. Well, steam came out, so that's a nice sign. How does this squash taste? Mm, that's pretty good. Mm-hmm. Cauliflower needs another about another minute, I would guess. Broccoli test. Nope. The squash actually feels done, so I'm gonna take that out and then put this in there for another minute. I'm gonna end up eating half of it as I test it before I get the time right. Total time on this for me was four and a half minutes. Tablespoon of water, tablespoon of water. Fresh ear of corn. Now this can only seem to fit pretty small potatoes. This part of the lid is actually hitting the corn, so it's not, it's almost closed, but it's, it's actually not completely closing. No explosions, that's good. The lid's not unbearable, but the steam coming out of there would be. That's pretty close. Mmm, done. I would say the corn and potato cooker, once you get the time down right, then it actually does work pretty well. I have to say, I really only use one of these on a regular basis, and that is the soup mug. I don't know if you can see or not, but it's, it's kind of scratched up. It's functionally fine. It's just scratched up from a lot of use, which means it's, it's you know, I've actually found it useful. Both my daughter and I have used this one quite a bit over the last year, so even though I didn't find a home for all of them, one of them has actually gotten quite a bit of use. Number 337 were these stylish sunglasses from the 90s. These are Amber Vision. Let's first take a look back at how the original review went. Before I crack this open, let's take a look at the box. America's number one sunglasses. The first sunglasses with a lifetime guarantee. Ah. Honestly, they're, they're not as cheap feeling as I thought they were. They, the, 
frame feels kind of decent. I feel like I should be on the ski slopes with these. Everything looks looks very clear. I mean, I, I have a lot of sunglasses. I have a sunglasses holder that's full and it holds 25 sunglasses. So not that I'm an expert on sunglasses, but I do have a lot of them. As expected, everything has a sort of amber tint to it and it's gradiated. So when you look from the top to the bottom, it, do, it does change. And I'll, I'll take these off and I'll show you through the camera what I'm seeing. Now you can debate whether they're a cool retro style or if they're horribly out of date but just to wear them with sunglasses, they actually have a very appealing uh, look to them. Would you wear these in public? Probably not. Okay. Here's what it looks like. You can see the top is darker and it goes to a little bit different shade of amber tint. You know, maybe these were actually pretty good for their day. Maybe Alan from The Hangover was onto something. Wow. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Those are... They're very amber, aren't they? Yeah, it's, yeah. So they are not polarized. Oh well. If they were selling these today uh, in different lenses, I'd probably recommend them. All right, so in the big picture, they're actually very good sunglasses. They're just not really a style that I particularly like. Maybe they're so old now, they're kind of a retro thing and some people might like them. I didn't continue to wear them after my video, but I'm glad I've tested them out. Number 338 was a collection of five dumb gadgets that actually worked. My friend Kathy from Tennessee was out here in Vegas. She helped me out with that. Let's first take a look back at how the original review went. Sure. So you can fold them. Nice. And then you snap them <laughs> on your wrist. Fold. Yep. And then yeah. snap time. Ow. <laughs> Come on. That's, you have to admit that's kind of useful. I mean, they're very clear lenses, at least right now. The reader wrist. All this is is a magnetic clip. You have one side that goes in the front of your shirt, the other side that goes in the underside of your shirt, and it basically creates a little a little hook that goes on in your shirt so you can put your glasses there. It's easy enough. Yeah, it's very simple. All right. So now just put like yeah. hang your glasses there, I guess. Side, I don't need my glasses. It's pretty strong, huh? I mean. Yeah. <laughs> It would be a lot to take this off. This looks like a regular umbrella, and it is an umbrella, but it's an umbrella hat. And then I think this is a chin strap. <laughs> no. <laughs> I th I, the, <laughs> oh, it just got better. <laughs> See, if you imagine you're working outside, this would be helpful. I'm trying to defend the, the umbrella I, I, hat. It's pretty solid, but it's not comfortable. It is tight on the head, though. I it mean. is kind of tight. This is a burrito <laughs> holder. You turn this like a big chapstick, and it and it pushes your burrito. Out. Oh, my burrito is, it needs to be, it needs to come out a little bit. Here we go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Can I save it for later? This is so dumb that she's feeling guilty about the inventor. <laughs> I mean, that's how dumb this is. Self stirring mug. Oh, there we go. Oh. Oh, yeah, that looks like a tornado. Oh, that's kind of cool. Nothing in the bottom. Pretty Nothing. good. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But you have to hold it, don't you? You can actually see all the way in there. That's kind of cool. Let me see. I'm gonna I'm going to declare, officially declare the self-stirring mug to be a product that works. This is not the one of that bunch that I use the most now, although I did try to give it away recently and I and I'm still I still have it. So surprisingly, people don't seem to want the burrito pop that much. Who knew? But what might surprise you is the one I have used the most, which is actually the self-stirring mug. I use this quite a bit in the winter time when I was making hot cocoa at night. It's actually good for that. I try using it for my coffee in the morning a few times, but I like a different kind of mug than this. It's completely unnecessary, but if you do have one, there's a lot of instances where it actually works. Number 339 was a collection of clip gadgets. These are kind of specialty products out there, but some people might find them useful. Here's how the original review went. Now, all you're supposed to do with this one is, it's just very simple. It just clips onto a pot or pan, and you're supposed to be able to put a utensil in there. That's where the handle goes, and it holds it in place. All right, let me see. Oh, well, you know what? In this case, this one actually seems to work. You'd have to kind of play with the angle, but not too, not too bad, really. Well, in this case, I think the problem is that the, uh, the handle's too thin. It's just kind of sliding down. This actually works. I'm kind of surprised about that. It's a pretty simple design. I think some of these ones that are angled that has more of a tendency to drip down. So far, so good. It's holding the spoon. This is not too hot, and uh, it's no worse for wear so far. Pull this tab apart, which reveals that. And this kind of goes in the bag, and this clips around it. Oh, I guess you could just fold that over. All right, I'm getting there. Now I should be able to just pour these out. 
Oh, very cool. All right. Definitely holding it. I almost feel like this is more difficult doing it their way. It's not, it's not pretty, but as long as it works, right? It's kind of a bottleneck with the, the cereal doesn't want to come out. It has to be something small, something like big chips, not going to work on there. So I got, got a saucer here. This is kind of average thickness. All right, so say we're at a party and I, oh, I could put too much stuff on my plate here. Good thing I have this dip clip. Look, I'm aggressively dipping here. It's not, it's not moving. You don't have to be dainty in your dipping. No dainty dipping there. This time I got on the paper plate. I'm gonna, I'm gonna see with some, some weight in there if it actually holds up. Hopefully it does, because I don't feel like cleaning this off my floor. Oh, we have, we have a problem here. My aggressive dipping just made it almost fall off. That paper plate, it was all right. I would have to be a little more careful on that one. So you got the hot mustard sauce. That's two packets in there and still room. All my nuggets and fries and I've got, that was four packets of ketchup. I got a whole lot more than that. So it definitely holds quite a bit. I kind of like this idea. All right, so in the years since that video was made, I actually find myself using these plate clips uh, once in a while. I would say I've used them maybe once a month since then. It's kind of a situational thing where if you have a plate full of food and you have a dip, this is the kind of thing you're gonna grab. It's not something only you're gonna need very often, but when you do, it's kind of nice to have. And I'd say they'd fill up pretty well with moderate use. Number 340 was the ASEAN TV containers, the stretch and fresh. Let's first take a look back at how the original review went. This is the Stretch and Fresh, which are kitchen containers that have an unusual lid that actually allows you to put oversized food in it. Today, I'm gonna to try to duplicate some of the advertising demonstrations and see if they actually work in the real world. In the demonstration, they show a red bell pepper and they push the lid all the way to the bottom with it. Again, their bell pepper was not as tall, so I don't wanna be unfair, so I'm gonna put it on the side. This is about the height they showed. Ooh. I guess I am getting all the way to the bottom. That's pretty good. They filled a container with large marshmallows. All right, that, I mean, you know, that kind of worked. They did show in their commercial it holding grapes. Takes us some force, but I did it. Look at this, not bad. This is what they were doing in the commercial. You know what, it's leak proof. They've got some celery in the commercial that's stacked on its end. I'm gonna try that and see how the lid handles that. You would think that would be challenging. Most lids would not, would not accommodate this. So anything that's gonna stick above the actual edge is gonna to have to be about a quarter of an inch away from the edge or you're gonna have this border causing problems. So I'm getting less impressed every second here. Come on. Come on, you're almost there. Woo, that was a bit of a workout. I did get it complete and it looks pretty good. Oh, is it hard to close sometimes? All right, there it goes. It wasn't too bad. And there it goes. All right, all right, it's day two. I have not looked at these yet. I'm gonna pull them out of the fridge and see how they look. All right, here's the onion. Still looks good. Here's the soup. Still leak proof, good. Let me see, the grapes uh, pretty good. Veggies, chicken, chicken looks pretty good. I'm gonna keep using them. I think that they're pretty good. I don't know how long these lids are gonna hold up. Uh, that's gonna be something interesting I'll have to update down the road. All right, so I've got mixed feelings about the stretch and fresh. I mean, I still use them. They've actually held up, so it's good in that respect. I can't say once since my video was posted that I ever used the actual stretch feature of it. I don't, I don't really use that. So when you don't use the stretch feature, really what you just have is a regular container with some kind of squishy lids. The only problem is that the, they've kind of warped over time and the lids are very difficult to get on there. I just, I, I struggled to get the lids on here. It's like, I can't even lock this one. They're very difficult to put on a lock. So, I, so a lot of times I just stick them on like this. I don't even lock them. So I don't lock them and I don't use the stretch feature. So I really could just use any container at all. They have held up, but I don't think they're really as useful as I originally had hoped. Hmm, it seems like only yesterday I posted my very first update video, but that was over five years ago. Today I want to give you an update on the first 10 products that I reviewed on this channel. But I digress. If I had to look back at this entire group of products and pick out my favorite among those, I'd probably go with the pocket tripod. Because not only have I used that one quite a few times, but it's been in my wallet, so it's definitely held up over time. Now the countertop dishwasher isn't something that I'm using, but it's still being used, so that one is also so held up quite well. I would say my least favorite of this bunch would probably be the ID Police. I named it my number two worst product of 2021 and my worst of the year last year. And my opinion is that has not changed since then. Well, that's it. I'll be back in about another month with another update video. I appreciate you watching and I'll see you next time.